Yeah. He's asking me to skip tutorial. Are you, are you asking me for a tutorial? <laughs> Stupid reactions. Tune in for. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? I'm good, sir. Just give me uno secondo. Wait. No worries. No worries. I get my poison. <laughs> Excellent. Is that how is are it, you? is that coffee or chai? Coffee. Hey, <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, we're we're doing well. Uh, how how are you doing with everything going on right now? Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you're working, you're thinking, if you just give me two days, just give me a couple of days, I would yeah. change the freaking world, right? And now. <laughs> yeah. Were you working on a project before this all happened and they shut it down? Yeah. Oh, okay. We were uh, doing a spin off uh, of a character in Kahani called Bob Biswas. Yeah, you're, we were going to ask you about that. So you're, you're in production for that. Hang on. You know, when I was doing this, somebody sent me a text, yeah? And accused me of reacting stupidly up to something, right? Uh -huh. And I'm thinking, yeah? Like, what did I do? Who did I react to? So I just kind of ignored it. Then I reread it and I said, it's somebody from Stupid Reactions. <laughs> <laughs> and <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As a, I was in the middle of my shoot, right? And I thought, you know, I must have said something really stupid to something. I thought, oh, sorry. No, in our, in our world, in the stupid family, calling you stupid is a, is a compliment, actually. Yeah, usually, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's usually a compliment. Uh, so, yeah. But that's awesome. Yeah, that we we loved that character. Um, we, we found out after we watched it. We watched it a few months ago, Kahani. Um, we found out that character was a famous, I mean, that actor was a famous Bengali actor. Um, that yeah. we had known about. Well, we were super, super impressed with everything about that movie, for one. Um, but so your daughter's directing this one, though? Yep. What, what can and we... Is this, this, is, this is her first feature film, right? Because she got a lot of attention for her short film. Yeah, this is... A, what's the, show me the title. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Up not time, I <laughs> Up that time I go with the colors of the Indian flag splashed on me like I was playing Holy. Cool, man, well done, bro. This yeah. Is, thank you. Bro. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, she's directing because I, I, I thought, you know, it's time uh, somebody saw things in a newer way. Because I'm quite cliched and old school. And I yeah. thought maybe, you know, when, you, when you're taking something forward, you need to have a newer vision to it, you know, a newer mm. uh, thought I, I'm guessing yeah mm. so yeah that, so that's the whole process and uh, yeah this is a first feature and uh, let's see yeah. is, it, is it with the same it, same actor uh no it, okay it's, gotcha this time it's uh, Abhishek donning the mantle of Bob mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that, let's see that, let's finish so that's we were like days to go and yeah, and that's that's got to be frustrating for her to have been right in the middle of helming her very first feature film and have to be shut down in process because of the uh, because of the lockdown. That's got to be frustrating. Mm. It is, but, but in a way, you know, you, you have to sort of uh, balance the pros and the cons, and you are putting a lot of people's life at risk if you, you know, if you're just selfish and continue. Of course, because uh, you you know every day there's 150 people or more gathering. Mm. Yeah. So, have to be a little more sensitive and it's not just us it's, it's not like somebody has a personal agenda towards her and saying hey we want to stop your shoot it's all of us right know? right exactly Everyone across the world is in the same boat so yeah and that, that's uh, yeah. It's quite acceptable. it was actually interesting that you called yourself old school in terms of your filmmaking because everything we've seen of you is from uh, Badla to uh, Kahani to even your short films all mm. have these massive twists in them um, and so it, I find that one very unique and also they're, they're um, super, super interesting. So I was wondering if that's something that's really important to you to kind of surprise the audience in that way or, or uh, what, how do you go about that in your writing process? Not really, no. Um, okay. okay. See, it all started with, shush, uh, hang on, this phone of mine. Uh, yeah, it's, it started with Kahani. Uh-huh. Uh, then it kind of went on to this a little film called Ahalya, which I made. Yep. Uh, a little short film. Yeah, we saw that one. And, um, 
I really wanted to stop after that because I didn't want, you know, it, it was getting very frustrating because in Kahani and then uh, we wanted to do a sequel to Kahani, you know, where Vidya Bakshi uh, would go forward and do something else. But, 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 you know, I couldn't figure out which body part she would remove now. Let's not get into the twist. But then came Badla. Mm-hmm. And Padla actually, uh, it's all Oriel Paulo's fault, not mine. Mm. Uh, he, he did it. He, he did it. He, he wrote this amazing, amazing script, right? And uh, when they gave me the script, it was like, you know, uh, you're handed a gold mine on a plate, and which I didn't want to change. So that twist came with the script. You know, it was a mm. whole package deal. Um, so it's fun. It's fun uh, when you have a twist in the script. Mm-hmm. But it shouldn't become a gimmick. Yeah. That's what you got to be careful about. You know, it, it shouldn't be a gimmick. It shouldn't. Uh, the I, I think the last thing I want to do is to pretend that I'm smarter than the audience. Mm. You you can't expect somebody to uh, 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 sit through a film and think, uh, oh, I made a fool of you. That's not nice. You know, it, that has to be organic. Mm-hmm. Uh, that has to be more of a thank you than a twist you know it's like hey uh, this pregnant lady came from london to kolkata uh, you were with her on the journey you enjoyed every bit of the journey you supported her in the journey and this is a form of thank you you know uh, so even if the twist wasn't there you would still be sympathetic to her you would still be with her on a journey uh-huh. you would still want to find a husband uh, mm-hmm. That's how I see it, you know, it, it, it's not like, uh, I think that's what I learned from Sixth Sense, where you can't be cleverer than the audience, you know, it, it's a, it's just me, old school, Sixth Sense, you know. So. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and you said something, you said something that is applicable uh, as well as an, as an actor that you don't do something just because it worked before, because then if your decision to do it is just because it worked, then you're not being organic and believable. You're just doing it to do something, and that's that's never a good motivation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The reason should be right. You know, the reasoning should be right. You should yeah. be making a film to reveal some twist. You know, if the twist comes in okay, great. Else, yeah, let it. Mm. Now, would it be the same as well? Uh, in addition to the twists those three th- things that Corbin just mentioned, uh, those, those, the films in your short film also have, in addition to the twist, they have very strong female protagonists and heroes. Mm. Um, is that something that attracts you in storytelling or is that just coincidental that those stories happen to have that and you just happen to want to tell those stories? I think always the stories came first mm-hmm. and then the protagonist, whether uh, Vidya or Tapsi, or Sir in Badla, uh, they came later, but it's always the story first. But having said that, yeah, uh, what I, uh, see when I was watching films outside India, right? Unfortunately in in, in India we have this, uh, and you don't, I can't blame anyone for that because a film is a very expensive process and you would, anybody who invests in a film would like to see some kind of uh, return blah 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 sure so uh there was a certain thought process behind funding a film you know anybody who has the money to fund the film would look for certain boxes to tick right Uh, and a pregnant woman running in the streets of kolkata wasn't in that box (laughs) (laughs) really what a shock yeah 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 yeah. it's like "Ah, no i'm not gonna take that that's funny. But I'm glad it happened. I'm glad it 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 it, it did what it did. I'm I'm glad what Vidya did with that film. I'm glad what she helped me to achieve. Uh, you know, in that film, whether it's Vidya, whether it's Kolkata, whether it's my editor Namrata, you know, they all put together this incredibly hard work uh, to make a film called Kahani, which in turn helped to change certain mindset. Mm-hmm. You know, people earlier who were not willing to give me money, were willing to give me money to make films with female protagonists, mm. for a lack of expression. So hence I went on, you know, I, I, I went on and 
crazily, I have been surrounded by very strong females all my life, where be it my mother, my wife, somewhere over there, uh, my uh, daughter. Uh, you know, they have been very influential. They have been, uh, uh, I mean, they are more stronger than I can ever hope to be. They are the one who look after me. I don't look after them. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, yeah, so it's, I, I just find it's very fascinating how they are more and more capable and able than us mm -hmm. as female versus male so so i think it's great you know i, I, I enjoy i mean mm. it, it's i don't do it to uh, make a statement or anything it, it just i like strong female characters and they just come naturally i, I wouldn't do it i wouldn't make a film for a strong female character but when i'm writing if they come in great mm. i'm happy I want to go back to something you, you said earlier about you you don't want to feel like you're smarter than the than the audience so I was wondering in the writing room um, is there a fine line between not thinking you're smarter than the audience but also not considering the audience uh, making knowing that the audience is actually intelligent as opposed to um, you know because sometimes the thing we hate is that some directors not not you of course but will tell us something and assume that we're not smart enough to get it so they have to force feed it to us so is there a fine line between uh, those two things of not thinking you're smarter but also just uh, assuming the audience is intelligent enough uh, you know it, it, that's a very uh, it's really a very uh, a strong task when you're writing especially if you're writing a Hindi film Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, because when you make a Hindi film, you're expecting it to go across India. Okay, uh, now across India means various cultures, various languages, various thought process, various uh, outlook towards life, you know, and various uh, a, a strata of people, you know, people who are base level, people who are mid, people who are so you just can't make. Uh, there is no one set of audience you're making a film for. Uh -huh. Okay, so sometimes when you force feed something, it's not because uh, you're thinking the audience is not smart enough. Because uh -huh. there is a section of audience who may want to be for, who may need to be force fed. Otherwise, they won't get you know uh, what perhaps you're trying to say. So I'm assuming that's where it comes from. Uh -huh. uh, that force feeding. Uh, because uh, there's nothing subtle in Hindi cinema. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't think the word subtle exists. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so, uh, so we kind of, uh, that's my son, I'm sorry. No worries. Uh, no worries. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm just getting rid of him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you know, sometimes you do it because you feel some section of the audience may not understand. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, but at, at the same time, we are moving with times. You know, people are getting more global. People are watching a lot of uh, stuff which are beyond Hindi cinema. You know, you're getting to see uh, things on OTTs which are uh, international. And I think our thinking is also changing. Uh, so we are accepting broader subjects we are accepting uh, more subtle things so hopefully mm. with time that will reduce uh, as we sort of you know evolve mm. that, that that makes me think of actually a two-part question here uh, mm. the first part being uh for example both both badla and kahani to mm. our and in, in our view, based on our exposure to Indian cinema and actually having grown up, obviously in American cinema, both of those films are way at the top of the list. When people from America ask us, or Indians ask us, what should I have my American friend watch as far as mm. a film that can come from India but will be digestible and acceptable both in runtime and the storytelling process that will have a mm. definitive story that has a climax, a conflict, you know, conflict climax resolution, and both Badla and Kahani. Mm -hmm. are are so digestible for mm -hmm. western audiences and that's my first part is how, are do you think about that when you're making a film are you looking for what you just said to find a way to make it as broad and acceptable to as many people as possible or is that just something that's a, a byproduct of the end result 
Well, I my first and foremost uh, loyalty remains to the Indian audience. Mm -hmm. I will, whenever I make a film in Hindi, uh, I don't care about. When I say I don't care, I don't mean it in a bad way. But my, sure. I have it has to be first and foremost for the audience who are in India. Mm. But having said that, what I do try to do is I try to uh, maintain a technical standard which is acceptable beyond India in mm. terms of sound, in terms of color, in mm -hmm. terms of uh, cinematography, in terms of production design. I try to not. It's not that I achieve it every time, uh, because I feel that's uh, what helps the other audiences to feel a little familiar mm -hmm. with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know, even though uh, the content is hardcore Indian, but since uh, I'm maintaining a certain amount, or at least trying to maintain a certain amount of uh, other technical, the ISOs or the ISI, whatever you call them. It, it helps, you know, it, it's like a bank is a bank is a bank, but I still give you the ATM facility and net banking. So, you know, even though it's an Indian bank, you're still familiar with the ATMs and the net banking. Mm. And mm. Mm. Great, good analogy. Yeah. Well, you do you see you do that. For, for, we want to applaud you for that. And, and what you said specifically, we pick up on and we may have even mentioned this in our reviews of both Badla and Kahani, that your uh, that's part of the accessibility that's broader than some of the Indian films we've seen is the art direction and the production design and even the way that you edit and frame your shots. They mm. have an accessibility to the palette of a Western audience without losing the, the DNA of it being an Indian film. It's why we love those films to recommend them to an American audience to say, if you want to get a real feel for it. And the other part to my question had to do with specifically say, Kahani, you, you're, you're uh, wanting to, uh, cater to and um, attract your Indian audience and give them the content you want. One of my favorite things about Kahani, and I'm prejudiced in this, is how um, everything takes place in Calcutta and the specificity of so many Bengali things and Durga Puja. And mm -hmm. I thought you did a, a brilliant job in terms of the connection of the uh, Durga Puja and the mother and Kahani and the pregnant woman, and but also making it not just a Bengali-centric film. It felt like it was, now here's the second part of my question. Uh, how hard was that to do to make it, because it feels like it's a, a fully available Indian film to everybody in India, but it is very Calcutta, Bengali specific. Uh, how did you do that? <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, that, that happens in I don't know. It, it's just that when I was writing, uh, I wrote it in Calcutta. Mm. And in, in, I was talking to another lady uh, a couple of days back. And, you know, in a city, when you're shooting in a city, uh, especially whether you're shooting in London or Calcutta or Bombay, I think it's the people who make the city. I, I, I don't think one specific building or one bridge or one tower of some kind, uh, that, that doesn't define the city. What defines the city is the people of the city. And that's what I uh, kept looking for when I was writing. I wanted to introduce as many characters as possible. Mm. So as an audience, when you're going to Calcutta, you meet a lot of people. You know, you're going to meet a lot of people. And I wanted her to walk a lot of the streets. So you get to lot of, see a lot of streets. But within the streets, you'll meet the people. Within the guest houses, you'll meet the owner. Within the lanes, you'll meet a tea stall owner or a little boy. So I, I think that's what I thought makes uh, uh, a city what it is, right? And and especially, I'm a great, uh, uh, big fan of a director called Shotojit Rai, you know? And uh, so are we. <laughs> okay. so most of my films right is uh, some way or the other connected to him I, I, I blatantly copy his style I, I blatantly copy anything good that he does and I've learned so much because I never went to school or anything right I learned everything on my own and I learned mainly by watching his film mm. uh, and uh, so in his books that he used to write about mysteries and adventures, right? Every time you went out, he used to introduce a lot of the characters within that place. You know, when you mm. go to Nepal, Gangtok, or Rajasthan, 
you would get to meet the people there. And that's, you know, what kind of stays in the back of your head. Mm. And that's what I did. And the motive of Durga Puja, uh, I felt was uh, something very unique, you know, like I'm a big Durga Puja fan. I, I, I'm like, uh, I, I can't explain how big I am uh, in, in terms of a fan. Uh, so I thought it would be interesting, you know, how Ma Durga comes in every year just for three days, you know, she solves all your problem and goes away. Uh, and I thought it will be an interesting motive. It will be something which is very uh, known to us, very close to our heart. And uh, like I said, I'm old school, man. I've grown up watching films of Manmohan Desai, Prakash Mehra, Yash Chopra, and nothing works better than a mother. <laughs> there is nothing bigger than a mother in Hindi cinema. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so... Um, yeah, well, it's straight out of the Opu trilogy. There's such the motif of the mother uh, in, in in those films as well. So, yeah, Gordon, I'm sorry she I didn't was, jump on the question was, you have. She was such a good actress in the in the, oh, in the El oh. uh, the mother in that one. I loved the mother. Yes, I was incredible. Um, anyways, um, on actually acting, we're both actors, um, and so that's what lo that's how we like to watch a lot of films. Acting is first and foremost for it, especially me. Um, I love it, and you've had a ton of our favorite actors, whether it be um, Amitak Bakchan, uh, Tapsi mm. Panu, Nawazuddin Siddiqui, um, Vidya, and so all these actors. Um, so first and foremost, you're the first one that we've talked to that's either worked with um, Amitak Bakchan uh, yeah. in directorial or producing. Um, but we've heard he's also like uh, really sh like one well prepared on set. And so we're wondering like if you could tell us like how he is on set. Like what is that legend like on 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 set? Well, on set he's an actor. Uh huh. Uh, to define him. Uh, because, you know, uh, this is what I have been uh, immensely uh, grateful to Sir about. Uh, even in my first film, you know, when I, I, I was basically a nobody, he still treated me like a director on set. I mean, mm. this is Amitabh. Ah, and, right. uh, 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 and so w when he's on set, he's absolutely loyal to the film. He's absolutely loyal to the script. And he's... He, he will discuss with you if he has any issues, but at the end of the day, he will always run with what you say. Mm. He's, so that's an incredible amount of trust he puts in you, uh, which in turn really uh, scares the shit out of you because you don't want to mess <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah, you know. Yeah. He, so, so, he, he, so, so, so I think that's an incredible, incredible uh, uh, strength and humility of a, a, a person when you're willing to you know your loyalty lies to the script and to the cinema mm -hmm. more than anything else you know he doesn't bring Amitabh Bachchan onto the set hey I'm Amitabh Bachchan and I'll do this and nothing like that you know sir is the most amazing person to work with he has tons of stories he has a lot of massively uh, happy music and everything and so I, I just love working with I'll tell you and he's like a freaking institution, man. He knows everything about cinema. He doesn't say, uh, I remember in Aladdin, we were shooting, right? And there was this one particular angle we were trying to do and Sir was standing on a kind of a slope and we were trying to angle it. And for the life in us, we just couldn't figure it out how to do it, right? So he came and he was looking at it. He didn't say anything. And we didn't want to tell him. We didn't want to you know, look silly in front of him, saying we didn't know. We, didn't know. <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> no, we're doing. <laughs> and we were kind of shitting bricks because you know the clock was ticking and he was there. And then he just came for his shot and he just took two steps this way and stood there. And we suddenly saw, oh shit, we have solved the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the man knows a lot of things, but he never kind of imposes that upon you. Mm. You know, he, he never. Uh, but but he he's the best person to work with. And, uh, amazing, amazing, uh, loving. And how involved are you with casting? Sorry, uh, uh, how? No, like, no, no. Go ahead. In, in terms of like, um, we've talked to um, Anjad Kashyap and, and and another director, and then even uh, Nawaz as well. But when you're casting your films, um, do you um, outside of the stars at least the um, the smaller characters. So do you sometimes, because sometimes in some films, it seems like people just pick certain people off the street 
and put them in their film, and and that's they look so natural in that in that uh, in that role. Um, so I was wondering your process with all that. You know, uh, mostly uh, I write my films mm -hmm. uh, because, like I said, I'm I'm not a trained director. I I need to really prepare in order to. Uh, make a film i need to understand my film i need to understand my characters i need to what they're doing in order to direct the film i i, I just can't take a script and boom let's start i can't do that so most of the time uh, when i'm writing i have an image in my head that a character called corbin looks like this you know he mm -hmm. sounds sounds yeah. attractive yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ash, you know, he's the kind of guy who's very vain, who will soft focus his background. <laughs> no, come on, man. This is you hit it on the nose. So, oh, that's yeah. funny. Oh, that's so, funny. Yeah. So, so you, 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 you have a kind of an idea, and the only time, the only time I've broken that notion of what I had in my head versus the character I created was. Uh, probably Nawaz in Kahani, oh. you know. I that's what I, I. Why did I know you were gonna say that? <laughs> yeah, that's the only time, you know, uh, uh, because when I wrote Khan, in my head Khan was a Patan. Mm -hmm. uh, Khan mm -hmm. was a big guy, right. no nonsense, kick ass, you know. Uh, uh, like a imposing kind of a, a thing. And then my casting director said, why don't you go and meet this person called Nawaz, you know? And I said, okay, I'll meet Nawaz, why won't I Nawaz? And so I, I met Nawaz in, in, in a place called Varsova, in a coffee shop. And in comes this man, uh, who's as small as me. <laughs> uh, and I'm thinking, hang on, why am I meeting this guy? But when I started talking to him, and I saw there was so much freaking anger in Nawaz, you know? He's like... Mm -hmm. You know, he's like a volcano ready to burst, right? And I thought, wow, this is Khan. You know, because what Nawaz taught me that day, height don't matter. You know, uh, physique don't matter. It's absolutely. It's uh, you know, because when I saw him, he reminded me of Robert Carlyle in Train Spotting. You know, mm -hmm. the guy who had no physical presence. You know, you would think you could just slap him and he'll fall down. But his, his, his mind is fearless. You know, when your mind is fearless, when a man has no fear in his mind, that man is capable of doing anything. And that's what the kind of feeling Nawaz gave me, you know, when I was seeing him, that this fucker has no fear in his head. He's willing to do anything to get what he wants, right? Uh -huh. and, and that's how Nawaz took on Khan and how he killed the freaking world. I mean, like, yeah, we if we fully agree. He's yeah. one of my favorite actors, just in general, anywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I love the man. I think he's so so genius and effortless in what he does, uh, and he could do literally any role ever. Uh, which I one one of the reasons I loved him in your film so much because it was such it was a very different role. Because at yeah. first at first you think it's going to be his stereotypical. Um, negative role is how in India how they call it but then you kind of flip it on its head uh, mm. and and it's it was so phenomenal that character I loved it so much so credit to you and and Nawaz for, for uh, doing that because it was such a great performance but I, but I think Nawaz did it because he got to wear a jacket <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I'm gonna wear a suit I said yeah. I'm in <laughs> that's funny well and it's a it's a very different role for nawaz and when we talk to him that's one of the things that he wants to make sure he does is that uh he, he he's very interested in making sure that he doesn't replicate the work he's done he wants to stretch he wants to be a new character uh he doesn't want to be uh, put into this place where he's just gonna he wouldn't even allow it. He can't be the same character. And you said exactly the same thing on your Akashyap told us about Nawaz, that when you meet him in person, and we have the, the, the blessing of knowing this as well, when you meet him, he's small of stature. Mm. He's not a big presence when he walks in the room as far as being loud or big or expressive. He's a very well-mannered, well almost shy kind of a person mm. as you're talking to him. But the moment you engage him, 
and you start to talk to him, there's an intensity in his eyes and a, and a directness and a focus. And, a, and one of the most important things about any screen actor, Nawaz has a stillness that's simmering. It's not just a stillness. You said it. He has a stillness that simmers. And that's why when you take that and put it on a movie screen, uh, he's, he's utterly captivating in every moment he's on screen and, and whatever role he has. So mm-hmm. it must have been a joy to work with him. Yeah, and those days, uh, very early days of Nawaz, you know. Yeah. And, uh, we were both learning, you know, and it was great, you know, uh, because we were all hanging out in the same hotel. We were all, you know, uh, just just roughing it out like how we would do in our university days, and uh, and that's what makes the film, you know, blood and sweat. And that's what makes a film, and and there was so much of it from whether it's Nawaz or Vidya or Porum or uh, Upu or you know all of these mm-hmm. people just put in so much hard work uh, and. Today you're interviewing me uh, for Kahani, uh, but I I was just one little cog in the wheel because there were so many other people making that film, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a collaborative so they, art form. That's one of the things we yeah, love about it. Yeah, yeah, film is a collaborative art. Nobody can say that I made that film. It's always mm-hmm. we make, you know. If anybody's saying I made that film, he's a cock. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> agreed, agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, in that collaborative effort, you said that without any training, I would really love to know what your experience has been from film to film, uh, especially for people watching who don't understand the relationship between the director and the DP, the cinematographer. Mm. Um, how, how, what has that been like for you? What has, what has it been and how much have you learned working with cinematographers? Uh, how did you, since you weren't trained, how did you learn to take what you're envisioning and partner with your cinematographer and turn it into a reality on screen? How did you learn that? Just on the street, just doing it? Yeah, and I'm very good at cheating. <laughs> <laughs> That's what. No, 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 bro. Let me, let me, ex- I'll tell you where all this is coming from, right? I remember very early days. I read one interview of Bhanu Athaya, who was, a co- who was the costume designer for uh, Gandhi, okay, who went on to win an Oscar. And somewhere she said she only met you know, Richard Attenborough twice in the whole process of... Mm. Okay. Wow, really? I, I, that's, you know, I, I could be wrong, but that's what okay. I read. And that's yeah. what stuck in my head. Yeah. And, and I thought, wow, that is so cool because the immense confidence you need to have in your HODs if you just meet them twice in a whole filming process, right? So you're hiring someone and you're completely, totally and fully ready to run with that person. Okay, so I hire my costume designer and I know she's going to do the job that I'm entrusting her with. And that's the principle I've always followed. Mm. Mm. So when I hire someone, I'm sorry, I'm not saying hire in a that way, when I work with my DOP or my editor, I let them be. So that's what they're bringing onto the table. So whether it's Setu uh, shooting Kahani, uh, in, in fact, a lot of, a lot of Kahani is Setu. You know, you think it's me, but it's Setu. Mm-hmm. Uh, he does all that colors. He does all those massively beautiful framing. You know, he, he tells me, uh, look, let's do it this way. So. You have to trust to HODs because because they are a skilled individual who knows what they're doing, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Obi, for example, Badla, man, that guy is, you know, uh, I, I'm not even one tenth of what Obi is, you know, in terms of his capabilities or his knowledge of cinema or anything. Uh, so, so I, I, I trust them. For the good or the better, I I have in I have I'm going to run with you because they're running with me. I'm all keen to run with them. The only time I uh, uh, get involved is I beginning of a scene. I tell them, look, this is the emotion that I want from a scene. This is the message I want to give to the audience from this scene, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I tell them, look, uh, this is a happy scene, and the message is X. So just help me to shoot it that way. You know, whatever your lighting is, whatever your thing is, and they do it, and they, and they do it extremely, extremely well. So I do get involved, but I, to a point, because beyond that, I don't know what I'm doing. 
So I rather let them do it. Uh, it and on that, because um, you've done obviously writing, producing, and directing, how hard is it for you as a director to not intervene in terms of uh, to, with the director? Uh, in when you're, you're producing, when, yeah, yeah, sorry, when producer. you're producing, uh, how hard is it for you as a director to not interfere with the vision of the director in that film? Ah, it's a very interesting question because mm -hmm. you know, the weirdly, the first film I produced was Team, mm -hmm. uh, which Ribu directed, and because I was just a producer, I, I was completely able to stay away from it. Uh -huh. You know, I was completely able to stay away. My only job was to drive Sir to the set and drive him back and chat with him on the way. So, it's which I really, really love. It's a good job. So, I was, yeah, I, yeah. I was a show for the whole thing. And then there was Vidya on the set, so I could yak with her. Um, so, that was pretty cool. Bob, however, is <laughs> causing yeah. problems for Yeah, no, I thought so. Yeah. No, I tell you why also, because I've written the film. Gotcha. So, so I find I'm more irritating as a writer than a producer. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, I, I'm more interfering as a writer than a producer. As sure. a producer, I don't give a shit, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. No, but as when a, you're writing, that's your baby. Yeah. As a writer, I'm extremely, extremely interfering. I'm making my daughter's life miserable. I, I, I'll be happy if she talks to me after the film. <laughs> But I don't know, man, when you write and because you have written it, you have certain things in your head. Uh, so you're also always arguing, no, no, but I wrote it like this. Why do you do and, and you tend to be a little stupid on set. Mm -hmm. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but I'm learning. I'm learning. Uh, but I think, uh, yeah, like as a producer, I'm absolutely non interfering. Uh, but never take me on a set as a writer. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll keep that in mind. Uh. <laughs> you 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 said something in that answer that is both it's encouraging, it's refreshing, and it's very revealing in terms of your own disposition and your humility. And it's the fact that you said uh, you basically admitted that you don't know everything. Uh, a lot of people uh, will. That want their audiences to think they know what they're doing and that they're the master of what they do versus being comfortable with the fact of, okay, I'm on set and there's Sir Amitabh Bakchan and I really don't know what I'm going to do right now. And um, uh, that's okay. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I think a lot of artists, whether they're directors or they're writers or actors, I think one of the biggest obstacles they have is feeling like they have to be perfect or they have to be better before they actually start to do something. Uh, in his film class, Martin Scorsese said that, don't wait until you think you're good enough to do something, just start doing it. Um, with, what would you recommend as far as an encouragement to anybody wanting to get into the film industry? Uh, would that be your main encouragement to say, don't wait until you think you know what you're doing to just, just, just start creating? Um, what encouragement would you give people who wanna be in the film industry? Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking. No, I, I think the first and foremost, you need to know your core strength. What is Agreed. it that? that? Right. Yeah. Uh, and you need to accept that. And more importantly, you need to accept what you're not good at. Okay. Uh, and those things you're not good at, be it writing or editing or cinematography or whatever. Uh, that you need to take help. You can't pretend. Don't pretend, you know, uh, to know what you don't know. I mean, and that's my only advice to uh, anybody would be because that's you're digging your own grave, right? Uh, you know, it's much easier and acceptable if you just say I don't know to certain things, and uh, there are a lot of people willing to help you out. So I, I, I think first and foremost, you need to know what is it that you want to do. Okay. Uh, whether you want to be a director, whether you want to be an editor, whether you want to be a writer, whatever that vocation that you're strong at, and pursue that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of time I'm, I, I find a lot of the uh, people that I meet, the, 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 um, the so-called, uh, they want to come into the industry, you know, they say, I want to be a director, but I'm willing to do anything. That mm -hmm. scares me. 
me too. Yeah, that's great. I mean, because you know you have to be a little focused and and hold on to that. Uh, uh, I, I know it's easier said than done, uh, but that's how I. I was always I always wanted to be a, a writer director and I always held on to that I didn't want to assist anybody I didn't want to uh, do anything and, and not because I am you know a pity or you know but I felt uh, if I have to be a director the most important weapon that I need is a script mm-hmm. you know, without a script I'm nothing as a director I mean no matter what mm-hmm. I am no matter how big a director you are without a script you are nothing uh so i would rather concentrate on writing a script than to assist somebody and i had this thought in my head if i had a good script i'll always get a film made mm-hmm. you know uh yeah so, because there's so many people out there who are wanting to make a film all they need is a script you know so so that's how i uh, plan my career uh, it could be the most wrongest way of planning a career i i, I don't know but it worked for me you know mm-hmm. I, i didn't want i i struggle like Uh, to make jhankar beats it took me 3 years you know it 3 years of knocking on people's door you know people uh say and uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah yep. but you can't give up yeah yeah you can't yes. got to hold on to it you know um, yes that's it uh, you know uh, that that's all advice i have I, i don't think there's any magic wand somewhere which will just boom and it'll happen uh That's how you do it, I guess. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry if I'm not giving. No, no, it's a great answer. Oh, no. That's yeah. a fantastic answer. Absolutely uh, agree with you. I want I want to thank you for your time. I'd like to finish the uh interview off with a little almost rapid fire, just a bunch of silly questions, uh answer to the best of your ability. Um great. and so uh not first chemistry. What'd you oh, say? No chemistry question. No chemistry nothing question? On, no, no, nothing on chemistry, or no formula or some shit like that, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, or mathematics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll yeah. I'll try. I'll cut out all the algebra questions. Uh, all right. So first and foremost, well, you already answered coffee or chai. You prefer coffee? Coffee. Good. <laughs> uh, favorite Hollywood film? <gasps> None. Uh, there's so many. I I, I can't. I, I can't. Shawshank. Shawshank. Oh, nice. Great call. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, do you want me to do it? Yeah. No, I'll, 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 I've got one. I'd like to ask him. Go ahead. Uh, being from being from Kolkata, um, do you have a favorite mishti? My favorite mishti, uh, it keeps changing, bro. Uh, like, <laughs> I found this incredible mishti where they wrap this uh, something called am papad. You know, it's like a mango thing, and inside there's a little shondesh kind of a thing. So it's 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 like uh, it looks like a bullet. The top is mango, and inside there is uh, shondesh, and it's about this big, and I can happily kill about ten of them in a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that sounds awesome. delicious. Uh, favorite uh, Hollywood director? Ah, oh, this is difficult because there's so many. Uh, okay, Spielberg. Of course, <laughs> That's, he's, he's he's my favorite. That, that makes me happy. He's in the range, man. I mean, that, I that, know it's his range. Yes, sir. The range. Yes, sir. Uh, he can do everything. Favorite Hollywood actor, male or female? Male or favorite Hollywood actor? Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, no, no. Tom Hanks, maybe. Got to love Tom Hanks. So many, you know, like I, I, I'm like old school, you know. Right now, I'm watching all Steven Seagal films, you know. Mm. Right now, big Seagal fan. Uh, so you know, it changes. It changes every week. Uh, what's your yeah. what What's your favorite drink? Drink, uh, coffee, uh, and sometimes I go to the UDP. I have a filter coffee, so that's. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, we had filter coffee when we were just in India a few weeks ago. It was. Yeah. Delicious. And I've been to, I've been to Calcutta a couple of times and have frequented several places that I know you frequent uh, that I will not name here so they remain anonymous so that nobody knows where your hangouts are but yeah. I've, I've loved Calcutta and places that you frequent. <laughs> oh, next time we'll do this. Next time we'll get yeah. together. Absolutely. Uh and uh I have a, a two personal questions. Uh do you like to eat rice with naan? <laughs> No. <laughs> Corbin does that. 
I love Dude, Corbin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know, you're doing Stefan on me, man. My friend Stefan, he used to do that thing, you know, like rice with naan. I, I love it. I went to a restaurant. I said, I, I want some lassie. And I said, lassie is a dog meat. You don't serve dogs. <laughs> That's funny. And then uh, last one. Uh, I've asked this to a few directors, and I want to get your opinion just because I like to get it. In Indian cinema, um, the one of the biggest issues I've had is almost all white actors or foreign actors are terrible. Uh, and so can you tell me why that is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I don't think... You know, I, I don't think we can afford uh, proper actors from London or the U.S., fly them down, keep them. So, you know, we walk out on the street. Hey, I just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah that, 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 sounds, that sounds familiar to what uh, others have said. Uh, That's what other, other people have told us. Um, yeah, and this is, but, but we are working for a better budget next time. If you, ever, if you ever feel the need to go out and ask people, just... Give us a call, and we'll uh, come come right down at the drop of a hat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, you a, we'll challenge you to a cricket game. And, that's uh, it. That's, that's and great. That's win, you get the role. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. It was so insightful and yes. so wonderful. You're such a wonderful person to talk to. You're funny. You're hilarious. You're intelligent. Uh, and we we love love your films. Looking forward to. I call my wife in, and you can repeat all that. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, I'll bring her in. I won't tell her. Um, but yeah, we're so looking forward to uh, uh, your next one, the the spinoff of with Bob, that character of, that your daughter's directing. That sounds fantastic. Uh, so thank you so much for allowing us to uh, sit down and chat with you. I hope uh, next time we're in Bengal, we can chat with you as well. Um, and Rick, would you like to finish it off? Yeah, no, I just appreciate so much, and I have a very particular appreciation for your love of Calcutta and for Satya Jabrai and my first deep connection to India has been for a lot of personal reasons has been Calcutta it's the first city I visited when I came to India um, the love of my life lives in Calcutta and so things all things Bengali that's why Kahani means so much to me is uh, uh, the, that that connectivity so we're we are honored that you came onto the channel and really appreciate your time you spent with us today. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, man, about that uh, SMS. I, I I was thinking, then I read it, the SMS, and I then I realized you were in town. So. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You were in the middle of doing your, your shoot at that time. Yeah, and, and, and I kept thinking, what did I react stupidly to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's okay. No. That's no worries at all. Thank you so much again. It was a wonderful, wonderful to talk to you. I hope you and your family stay safe during this time. Yes, yes. Too. stay safe. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so you, much. Thank you. Our stupid reactions. Tune in for.